Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about kernel functions in machine learning. Kernel functions provide a powerful tool for enhancing the capability of machine learning algorithms to handle the complex and non-linear patterns available in the data. We can define the kernel function as a real valued function of two arguments represented as k of x, x dash belongs to R. This function is symmetric and non-negative. Symmetric means k of x, x dash is equal to k of x dash, x and the k of x, x dash value will always be greater than or equal to 0. Now, let us see different types of kernel functions. First one is linear kernel. Let pi of x is equal to x. Pi is the transformation function applied on the input feature x. We get the linear kernel defined by just the dot product between the two object vectors which is represented as k of x, x dash is equal to x transpose into x dash. This linear kernel is useful if the original data is already in high dimension and if the original features are individually informative. In this case, the decision boundary will be already clearly separable as a linear combination of the original features. So it is not necessary for this kernel to work in some other higher dimensional feature space. So when number of features are high, we can go for the linear kernel. Next, let us see about Merkle kernel. Let x is equal to x1 to xn be a finite set of n samples from input space x. The gram matrix of x is defined as k is equal to k of x1 comma x1 up to k of x1 comma xn and here last row will be k of xn comma x1 up to k of xn comma xn. So this is the gram matrix. If for all x belongs to the input space x, the matrix k is positive definite, then the k is called the Merkle kernel or a positive definite kernel. We can express this Merkle kernel using Merkle's theorem. If the gram matrix is positive definite, we can compute an eigenvector decomposition of it as shown in this equation. That is k is equal to u transpose into diagonal symbol u. So this symbol indicates the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues where lambda is greater than 0. Now, if we consider an individual element of k, we can represent it as kij is equal to diagonal matrix of ui transpose into diagonal matrix of uj. Here, ui represents the ith column of the eigenvector matrix u. Similarly, uj represents the jth column. We can define the feature mapping pi of xi corresponding to the input vector xi as pi of xi is equal to diagonal matrix of ui. So based on this, we can rewrite this equation as k of x, x dash is equal to pi of x transpose into pi of x dash because pi of x can be written as diagonal matrix into ui as mentioned here. So this is the modified equation for Merkle kernel. Next, we have polynomial kernel. The polynomial kernel is used to compute the similarity between two vectors in a feature space over polynomials of the original variables. The formula for this kernel is k of x, x dash is equal to gamma into x transpose x dash plus r all power m. Here, x and x dash are two vectors in the input space for which we want to compute the similarity x transpose into x dash is the dot product of vectors x and x dash. This computes the similarity of x and x dash in terms of the directions and magnitudes. Gamma is the scaling parameter which is often called the coefficients. This adjusts the influence of the dot product and controls the width of the polynomial feature space. And r is a constant which is greater than 0. This ensures that the kernel always have a positive value. And m is the degree of the polynomial. Higher the values of m, it leads to more complex decision boundary in the transformed feature space. So if the number of features are less, we can go for the polynomial kernel. Now let us see about sigmoid kernel. The sigmoid kernel is derived from the neural network activation function known as the sigmoid or hyperbolic tangent function. The formula for this kernel is k of x, x dash is equal to tan h of gamma into x transpose x dash plus r. So the equation is similar to polynomial kernel. Only difference is we are applying tangent function here instead of polynomial. The tan h of x is the hyperbolic tangent function which maps any real valued number to the range minus 1 comma 1. 
it is often used as an activation function in the neural networks x comma x dash are the input vectors for which the kernel computes the similarity and x transpose into x dash is the dot product of vectors x and x dash gamma is the scaling parameter that controls the sharpness or slope of the hyperbolic tangent function and r is the bias term that adjusts the threshold of the sigmoid function next kernel is rbf kernel rbf stands for radial basis function the rbf kernel function for two points x1 and x2 computes the similarity or how close they are to each other this kernel can be mathematically represented as k of x1 comma x2 is equal to exponentiation of minus norm of x1 minus x2 whole square divided by 2 sigma square let d12 be the distance between the two points x1 and x2 represented here we can now represent the d12 as follows so d12 is the distance between x1 and x2 so it can be represented as x1 minus x2 whole square so based on this we can rewrite this equation as k of x1 comma x2 is equal to exponentiation of minus d12 divided by 2 sigma square the maximum value that the rbf kernel can take is 1 and occurs when d12 is 0 which is when the points are same that means x1 is equal to x2 when the points are same there is no distance between them and therefore they are extremely considered similar when the points are separated by a larger distance then the kernel value will be less than 1 and almost close to 0 which would mean that the points are dissimilar so distance can be thought of as an equivalent to dissimilarity measure because we can see that when distance between the points increases they are less similar and also the kernel value decreases as shown in this diagram so here we have three points this is x1 this is x2 and this is x3 d12 is the distance between x1 and x2 d13 is the distance between x1 and x3 so the distance of d12 is less than d13 as mentioned here so if the distance is less then there will be high similarity and the kernel value will also be high but if the distance is large the less similarity will be there and the kernel value will be low so k of x1 comma x2 will be greater than k of x1 comma x3 now let us see about illustration of rbf kernel with an example it is important to find the right value of sigma to decide which point should be considered similar and this can be demonstrated on a case by case basis as shown here so first we will consider sigma value as 1 so when sigma is equal to 1 the sigma square also becomes 1 and the rbf kernel's equation can be represented as k of x1 comma x2 is equal to exponentiation of minus of norm of x1 minus x2 whole square divided by 2 sigma square so since sigma square is 1 here 2 into 1 is 2 so it is represented like 2 now the curve for this equation is given here we can notice that as the distance increases as the distance increases the rbf kernel exponentially decreases and is 0 for the distances which is greater than 4 as mentioned here so the region of dissimilarity is happening after the point 4 so in this uh, we have region of similarity here also we have region of dissimilarity so we can notice that when the distance d12 is equal to 0 that is here the similarity is 1 and as the d12 increases beyond 4 the units of similarity becomes 0 so from this we can see that if the distance is below 4 there will be high similarity but if it is greater than 4 then the points are less similar so as we have seen in the previous slide as the distance increases there will be dissimilarity next let us assume that sigma is equal to 0.1 when sigma is equal to 0.1 sigma square becomes 0 0.01 and the rb of kernel mathematical equation is expressed as shown here in the denominator we have 2 into sigma square that is 2 into 0.01 is 0.02 so the curve for this equation is given here so the width of the region of the similarity is minimal for sigma is equal to 0.1 as shown here and hence if only points are extremely close they are considered as similar so in this curve uh, we can see the extreme peak and also 0 for the distances which is greater than 0 0.2 so the points are considered similar only if it is less than or equal to 0 0.2 as mentioned here so when the distance increases there will be high dissimilarity in the regions 
Next, let us consider the value of sigma as 10. So, when sigma is equal to 10, sigma square becomes 100 and the kernel equation is represented as shown here. In the denominator, we have 200 that is 2 into sigma square, 2 into 100 is 200. The curve for this equation is given here. So, the width of the region of the similarity as mentioned here is large for sigma is equal to 10 because of which the points that are farther away also considered to be similar. So, the width of the curve is very large for sigma equal to 10 and the points are considered similar for distances up to 10 units as mentioned in this diagram and beyond the 10 units we can observe the region of dissimilarity. So, thus from the above cases it is evident that the width of the region of similarity changes as the sigma value changes. So, therefore, we have to find the right sigma value for a given data set. So, to obtain the optimal curve. Next, let us see about string kernels. String kernels are used when we are interested in matching substrings or sequences within the strings. Let A denote an alphabet, for example, A to Z, and A star represent all possible substrings formed from A up to a certain length M. The function pi of x will map a string x to a vector of length A star, where each element j is the number of times a particular substring A j star appears in x. For example, if we have the alphabet A comma B and if we consider the substrings of length up to 2, the possible substrings which we can frame are A, B, A, 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 B, B, A and B, B. So, the string kernel measures the similarity between two strings that is X and X dash. So, it can be expressed as K of X comma X dash is equal to summation of pi S of X into pi S of X dash. Here, pi s of x denotes the number of occurrences of the substring s in x. So, the kernel computes the weighted count of the common substrings in both strings x and x dash. Next, let us see about Matan kernel. This is used in Gaussian processes for controlling the smoothness of the modeled function, particularly in spatial statistics and nonlinear regression, which is expressed as k of r as shown here. Here, r is equal to x minus x dash that measures the similarity between x and x dash. v is the smoothness parameter which is greater than 0 and l is the length scale parameter that is also greater than 0 and kv is the modified Bessel function and this parameter is called as gamma parameter and when v tends to infinity this Matern kernel will be reduced to RBF kernel. Lastly we have Fisher kernel. This is used to measure the similarity between data points based on a probabilistic model such as generative model. The Fisher kernel is defined as shown here. So, k of x comma x dash is equal to u of x transpose into i inverse into u of x dash. Here, u of x can be expressed like this. So, this is called as Fisher score which represents the gradient of the log likelihood with respect to the model parameters theta. And I is the Fisher information matrix which measures the expected information provided by the data about the parameters. So, thus we have seen about various kernel functions in this lecture. Thank you.